God bless you guys. This is Sean here from uh, Faith Brings Change. I just want to come on here and update you again about what was going on about on October the 6th, what I'm going to be doing uh, coming back in October after this is my last month here. As I said before, the Lord told me that this was the beginning of the great outpouring of God, and he told me he was going to start with me. And a few days later after that, I heard this guy, James Gall, get on Sid Roth, and he had a dream where God told him, welcome to the great outpouring of God. This is the start of it. And so it a lot of people have had uh, ideas about this, what this great outpouring is going to be like. And, and no doubt it's going to be very positive and there's a gonna, God's going to be moving in signs and wonders. But he warned people, even on Sid Roth's show that he came on, which is that guy that, that spoke that, you know, this was the beginning of the great outpouring of God. Even on his show, he was told that, you're not ready. The church isn't ready. And, and he, and he said about, you know, he's wondering about rapture and he had a vision in heaven where they said, he said, go get my body. And he said, we're not ready yet. And he was crying out and he asked, what did he mean? And then the Lord told him, and son, in the state your heart is right now, you're ready to go into heaven, but you're not ready for the next great move of God that's about to begin. And he said about pouring out his power and these things would kill the people of God if they're not prepared for it. And so I want to I want to make this clear, guys, because this is serious stuff. I'm not playing around with this stuff. God's t talking to me about and talked to me about. He's given me the authority to judge the nations, and there's going to be other people. God sets up judges in the Bible, and uh, the the people of old they pronounce judgments uh, like Isaiah on his own people and everything it was to bring them out. So once I pronounce these things, guys, and judgments, I can't go back on it. So that means if I ever say that. I'm not, but I'm just telling you how serious it is and how it's not like I'm trying to judge you as far as condemning any of you. But it's so serious that once I speak it, if I go into any of those sins, uh, it'll affect me. It'll It's a judgment. There's going to be judgments on women that are wearing wigs and everything. I'm going to be pronouncing that God has shown me. And there's, there's a judgment about instead of well-set hair baldness. And there's going to be judgments on people looking at pornography, the... Uh, gonna affect stuff there gen i don't want to uh, get into details and get graphic about it but i'm gonna have to pronounce judgments on those and the reason why is to uh, get the church woke up to shake them to wake them up that's the only thing they're gonna listen to and it's not pretty and i don't take any delight in it but the lord's told me to do this and what i speak i will uh he will carry out because i'm keeping his commandments and so I'm telling you guys to get ready for this. And women, don't be wearing that makeup and everything because there are going to be judgments for the, the things that are going to break out on people's faces and things uh, that are wearing that makeup and the eyelashes, and including the top of the head and everything. So you don't want to be wearing those things because God is leading me to do this and he's going to fulfill it. And which is proven, he said, unless you, know, you guys see signs and wonders, you'll never believe. And so he's going to pour out signs and wonders. And going to strike the earth with some stuff and he already already saw in michigan that uh there was two dams that broke open you know some of you have probably heard about that and all that water came out that is a sign a prophetic sign of the great outpouring of god that it's begun and that it's not only a great outpouring it brings judgment also all those people that was judgment on them and I, this may be controversial but the lord told me he did that he said that he allowed that it's part of the great outpouring of god and and this great outpouring, he said, it will kill the church if they're not ready for it. Meaning, because there's going to be, once I pronounce judgments on these things, guys, I can't go back on them. Even if I were to go and wind up in one of those sins again, which I'm not, because I've seen the power now and, and God is keeping me in the Psalms. But I'm just saying it would affect me also. And so there's going to be judgments on people's things that are happening, skin conditions that are going to break out and different things on, uh, looking at pornography after I pronounce those judgments. It's going to be starting October 6th, 21 days I'm prophesying. And God is going to be fulfilling those things. And there's going to be judgments on, like I said, wearing wigs. And they're the hell testimonies that Yeshua said that they were snakes and they were enchanted, turned into, uh, turned into a hair brought to the earth. 
And the reason why that's a sin is because it's a lie. It's not your real hair. And the Bible says nobody who loves and practices a lie can get into heaven. And this one woman was wearing all that stuff. And she went to hell. She died. And she was literally burning. She died in the hospital. She was burning. And she saw women with big earrings burning in the fire. Another woman died of malaria. She wasn't even Christian. And she was getting there ripping up her head. And they said, because you permed your hair and you did all these. And they said, didn't you know that piercing your ears, that's slavery? That represents slavery? And they were doing that, so women piercing their children's ears and stuff, and it's it's terrible. Don't do that to your kids. It's it's God is going to bring judgments down, and for doing these these kind of things, being artificial and artificial nails, judgments on on the skin, on the fingernails, and things that are that are very painful, like arthritis and things. And so I'm trying to tell you guys, give you a hint at what it's going to be like later, and so prepare for that, guys. You got about you know, four months until then to prepare for it. But I love you guys. But Yeshua told me to gather you guys and, and wake you up and help wake you up in and, and the same way he's woken me up because he's got to get you uh, out of those things so that he can set you apart. Then he can give you the same power I'm walking in right now. And then you can do the same thing also. And so we can get everybody in the body of Christ on board and it's going to happen for a while. As I told you, Yeshua is not coming back for his church now. He has to first, judgment begins at the house of God. Before he can take it home, he has to judge it and set it in order so that, because if he didn't, he wouldn't have anybody to really take very much. And he said, it's told me it's not enough. He's got to, he's got to give more. And he told another servant that same thing. And so these things are already written about. He said, remember, he said in the book of Revelation that I'll cast her into sick, a sick bed that commit adultery with Jezebel and her children in the great tribulation. Well, he, I'm going to pronounce a judgment of a sick bed and like unto that. And he said, he's given me authority to do it from his word because I'm walking in him. And it says Psalm two, that he'll give authority for, he says, even as I received of my father, you who overcome I will give you authority to judge the nations. You will strike, break them with a rod of iron that shall dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel, even as I've received in my father. And that's from Psalm 2. And God set up judges in the Old Testament even, and he had Elijah. And I know there's going to be three years and a half of uh, his people prophesying and doing all these things that I'm about to be doing on a wide scale basis. But this is not that yet because Elijah did the same things. But it was not the end. I mean, it wasn't like those three and a half years. So I'm a type and shadow. I'm doing this. I'm starting this out for you guys. Because uh, God says judgment begins at the house of God. And so anything you see from now on, guys, that happens in the world, uh, God says he, there's not going to be any more delay, but he's going to begin carrying out the judgments of revelations. He said those people that didn't stop fighting them and everything, he said, I'll come against them and fight with them with the sword of my mouth you know, in the church. And so he's leading me to fight with the, the lukewarm churches that are fighting God and fighting holiness and, and saying we have to keep going back and forth. He's now fighting against them with the sword of his mouth. And, it, and it's because he loves them. And I, and I got to make sure I stay in love when I'm doing this, you know, and not get puffed up because I have no power of my own. It's only his authority. But I'm telling you these things, guys, so that you can get ready for this stuff because it is going to be serious when it happens. There are going to be judgments. People might think God is cruel. How can he do that? How can he send sickness or judgments on a person's head or body? But he did it in the Old Testament, you know, those plagues. And, and he's the same God. And it says he does it in the book of Revelations. And it says that the earth got mad because of all these things that they, the two witnesses did, which are the people of God. And they're a select few people of God that actually walk in the spirit of truth, the spirit and truth. Because it says the two witnesses are two lampstands. And one lampstand in the beginning of Revelation is called a body of believers. So it's in no way it can be too literal number because one lampstand um, is a body of believers or a candlestick, you know. So that represents a body of believers the two bodies of them and I'm, I'm starting out that and so it says they have the power to shut up heaven so it doesn't rain in the days of their prophecy i'm going to be praying that rain is withhold in the 21 days i'm prophesying and uh they have power to strike the earth with plagues as often as they want you know if anyone should harm them fire comes out of their mouth and devours their enemies and if any man should harm them he must be killed in this way and there's going to be a fire of, of judgment of, of so those servants out there better be careful what they're speaking because i'm going to be praying mercy on them and everything but the words that i'm going out of their judgment 
then uh, the Lord will decide how he deals with them with those words. And so it's not a thing to be uh, joke around about or anything. And it, it's serious now because the reason why God is doing this, guys, is because you guys got to get in there in the harvest and 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 we got to all work together and gather souls. And we can't gather souls for salvation and preach to them if we're not safe. You see what I'm saying? And so God is going to do a judgment of tearing down first in October. And after guys tearing down, guys, because I can't build a foundation. Like when God comes and he destroys the earth to remake it, he can't set up a new earth until he destroys all those old foundations. And so I have to do a month of tearing down. And it's going to be very hard, and I'm probably going to be losing a lot of subscribers, but it's for the sake of people's souls. But after that tearing down in November, I'll come back, and there's some positive prophecies. Like, you know, you see positive prophecies about God saying, comfort, comfort my people. Tell them, you know, their sins are forgiven and all this stuff. Those kind of comforting ones. They're original prophecies. But they have to come after the shaking, guys. And you have to see signs and wonders so you'll know that it came not from me, but from God. So that's why I'm going to be doing these things. And, and I'm putting myself out there in a big way and, and God would have to back me up and I'm putting myself out there. But I trust he always backs up his word. And so I have nothing to fear. And so I'm going to step out on faith because I know I'm not doing it for myself. I'm doing it in love because too long has the body of Christ just wandered back and forth and we played around with salvation and we treated it so carelessly like it's nothing and you see those who don't know God having the same power as those who know him. And, and that's got to change. There's got to be a difference. And so these judgments that are pronounced will begin to put a distinction between those who serve God and those who don't. And God said those who know their God in their last days will be strong and do great exploits. And so uh, I know my God and I know his power. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of God. It's the salvation and power of God. So I'm going to be speaking these things, guys. And... I need you to stand with me. You don't have to. I, I can stand on my own if I have to. But if you'll stand with me, guys, I, I believe God will give you a great blessing and everything. But but just be prepared to go through those things and let God purge out. Because fire is the only thing that's going to uh, burn out the impurities of gold. And the only thing that can go into heaven, guys, is pure gold. Gold without dross or sin. There's no gold with impurity in heaven. There's no... Uh, street the streets are pure gold they say there's never any impurity and that represents the people that go into that there's no dross in them they've been purged and i know there are deathbed conversions but those deathbed conversions are very powerful because those people give up everything and they see they're about to go to heaven my mom even though it was a deathbed conversion kind of she did believe in god but it was it was a total repentance and that's the kind of repentance that the same man on the thief on the cross he had that kind of repentance that's the one that got him into heaven. Total letting go. He let go of everything if he could have. But we don't all get that chance, guys. A lot of people don't get that chance. And so this is to get the church in the shape that she needs to be, guys. And after that, then she can go forth and pre preach the gospel. But there's going to be a time. So this isn't the time, guys, when you see these things happen. That doesn't mean Yeshua is coming back right now because he's not. He's got to get his body. He's told me already. He's got to get his body in shape with these judgments. And, and he's got to teach you guys how to walk in them and be his two witnesses and, and be holy. And so you can go out into the world and do these things. Because it's time. It's time that, that all men everywhere repent and come back to Yeshua. And I love you guys, and I'm praying for you always. Uh, you send me your prayer request on truthforbearer1414 at yahoo.com. I'll take care of them. I'll, I'll be praying for you guys. But when I'm doing these prophecies also, I'm not probably not going to be able to respond to you guys. I'll just, if you hit any like or, or dislike, I can just love or, or whatever. But but I'll, I'll answer you after those 21 days and everything. But you can still send me your prayer request, and, and I'll be uh, praying for you and stuff. But I love you guys. Uh, be praying for me. Also, I got to get, I got a ram's horn and just pray I'll learn to blow it because if not, I'll have to maybe put a, a little ram's horn sound at the beginning of my, my, uh, videos. You know, it's, I don't, it's not something I have to do, but I want to fulfill all righteousness and all, all things according to the Bible and everything. But I love you guys. I'm praying for you. Send me your prayer request. Until next time. Shalom.